Big news in the GMRS world, perhaps the biggest news since the FCC's first introduced GMRS to the world way back in 1962. Back then, it wasn't even called the FCC's. Back in those days, the FCC's was still known as the Federal Amplitude Governance Service. Anyway, the big news is that last month, BTEC introduced the GMRS RPT50, the world's first fully native, made just for GMRS, 50 watt big boy repeater. Now this is the point in the video in which some people will no doubt leave comments proclaiming that full power GMRS repeaters have been around for years. And those experts would be wrong because what those experts are trying to say, but are unable to articulate, probably due to their crippling dumbism, what they mean to say is that ham or UHF repeaters that are also able to transmit on GMRS frequencies and can be used as GMRS repeaters have been around for years. But that does not make those repeaters FCC approved GMRS repeaters any more than using a ham radio to transmit on GMRS makes a ham radio a GMRS radio. Of course, there is the Redivis RT97 and the Midland MXR10, which are both GMRS repeaters, but they are limited to less than 10 watts. Unlike the new BTEC GMRS RPT50, which, according to BTEC, outputs 50 watts of RF electricities. So allow me to share with you the specifications of this new repeater and then share my personal experience with it. The price for the new BTEC GMRS RPT50 is $1,499.89 of monies. Now, before you shart yourself over that price and start leaving stupid comments about how sad you are because it costs too many monies, it is important to both remain calm and bear in mind that for a higher end 50 watt repeater, this is actually priced at the low end of the spectrum. And on a happier note, when I ordered mine, I was not charged anything for tax or shipping. So the total out the door cost was exactly $1,499.89 of money. And just to be clear, I very, very painfully paid full price for my GMRS RPT50 with the monies that I received from my supporting channel members over the last several months. Those are the very kind and generous viewers that clicked on the thanks or join buttons below. Because of the price of the repeater, I also had to use extra monies that I saved up all by myself by doing extra chores, like washing my wife's boyfriend's car. Forgive me for referring to my notes while I tell you all of the technical details about this new BTEC GMRS repeater. This repeater is big at about 17 by 14 by three and a half inches, and it comes with rack mounting brackets, and it weighs a lot. The shipping weight was about 28 pounds. The repeater is firmware updatable, and it does do automatic Morse code identification better known as CWID. The repeater is rated for temperatures ranging from 22 degrees below zero up to 140 degrees of Fahrenheit. And it has a 100% duty cycle. The repeater comes with a user manual written in near perfect English. It comes with a regular 120 volt power cable as well as a 13.8 volt power cable for connecting to a backup battery or alternate electricity's source. It also came with a USB programming cable for connecting to your computer for programming. However, you can do pretty much all of the setup and programming on the repeater itself using the keypad microphone. It has a three and a half inch color LED screen on the front and on the rear, it has three N type connectors, a receive in and a transmit out connector for use only if you bypass the built-in internal duplexer that comes with it and a combination transmit and receive N type connector 
which is the one that connects to the internal duplexer. On the back, there are serial connectors labeled Wi-Fi and LTE 4G and an RJ45 jack labeled IP. However, none of those connectors are enabled, although BTEC says that the serial connections may be enabled in a future firmware update. So just for deconfoculation up to this point thus far, this is an analog only and GMRS only repeater. The repeater comes with a microphone that, unfortunately, many people will be very disappointed to learn that cannot, can not be used as an actual microphone. The microphone is used only as a keypad to enter information on the repeater, so as of now, at least, you cannot use it as a standalone base station type radio. To set up and start using the repeater, you simply take it out of the box, plug it in, select the channel pair that you want to use using the channel knob on the front of the repeater, enter your CTCSS or DTC tones, and the repeater is ready to go. Using the software is not necessary, however, it does make setting it up faster, maybe. The software is very simple to use and it is locked down so that you cannot enter new channels or change any of the pre-configured frequencies or frequency pairs. The software ran fine on my Windows 11 computer, but it would not work on my older Windows 10 computer. In the software, the repeater self-identifies as a TR600, which is a repeater sold under the names of Kitasun and Kaidasira and now also apparently BTEC. As previously mentioned, the repeater comes with an internal duplexer that BTEC says is an advanced smart duplexer pre-configured for all eight GMRS repeater pairs. And everything about this repeater is very simple, and that is by design. It can do split tones, but it does not have advanced features like stun, remote shutdown, internet connectivity, or deny list by radio ID, and it is limited to storing only eight channels or configurations. And unfortunately, the repeater has no courtesy tone, otherwise known as a Roger beep. Now sit back and relax and allow me to recount my personal experience with using my new BTEC GMRS RPT50 repeater. Being the queen of all that is GMRS, of course, I very eagerly ordered the repeater a day or two after it was first released. BTEC shipped it pretty much immediately and I received it after just a couple of days. Upon deboxing the repeater, the very first thing that I noticed is that the knobs on the front of the repeater were very loose, which I did not prefer, but I carried on. I configured the repeater the same as I have my existing Vertex 7000 repeater configured so that I could swap it out and compare the two repeaters. And it was at this time that I realized that the repeater did not work if it was configured to use a DTC tone. The repeater worked just fine using a CTCSS tone, but once I entered a DTC or DCS tone, the repeater stopped working. So I figured this would be a great time to see how responsive the boys and girls in the BTEC support department were. So at 5.01 p.m. on a Friday evening, I sent an email to BTEC support and I did not expect to hear back from them until at least Monday morning. One hour and four minutes later, just after 6 p.m. Friday night, I received a response from BTEC support confirming that there was indeed a known issue when using DTC tones and they were currently working on a fix. However, they gave me no timeline for when that fix would actually be available. So I packed up the repeater and slid it under my desk and I assumed it was going to be a while before I saw that update. The very next day, which was a Saturday, I received another email that the firmware update was ready. I applied the firmware update, which was very easy to do and bam! The problem was resolved. At this point, I think it is safe to say that not only was BTEC support responsive, but they also actually got the job done and fixed the problem all within less than 24 hours and on a weekend. So I unplugged my Vertex 7000 repeater, put up the BTEC in its place, and tested it out for about 30 minutes 
And as far as I could tell, it worked 99% the same. The VTEC was slightly weaker on very weak and very distant signals, but just barely. And then all of a sudden, after about 30 or 45 minutes, nobody could hear the repeater anymore. It basically stopped working. I could still hear everything. The lights were still on, but nobody could hear the repeater. I hooked it up to my power meter and found that the repeater was only outputting about seven or eight watts when only a few hours before it was outputting 38 watts. So once again, I contacted BTEC support who again responded very quickly and called me via the telephones for more troubleshooting. And the first thing that the tech told me is that my previous measurement of 38 watts, which was after the duplexer, should have been closer to 45 or 50 watts. So he feared something was wrong with the repeater right out of the box. We did more troubleshooting and he determined what deep down I already knew. And that was that the duplexer had likely failed. BTEC offered to ship out a replacement duplexer. All I had to do was open up the case and take a couple of more power tests directly from the amplifier so that they could confirm that it was indeed the duplexer. However, unfortunately, the case screws were cemented in so tight that I could not remove them. So the only option was to pack everything up and send it all back to BTEC. And again, I just want to reiterate that BTEC support has been excellent. Not just excellent, but above and beyond excellent. But my repeater was still dead. After a couple of days, BTEC confirmed that indeed the duplexer needed to be replaced. However, unfortunately, they were waiting on some other part that was also required, and they estimated that that part would not be available for another two weeks. I was hoping that BTEC would offer to ship me a whole new repeater, but they did not. So instead, I requested a full refund, which BTEC processed within the hour. The end.